another big step towards an open debate over the validity of the Big Bang expanding universe concept occurred on September 3rd when the New York Times published an opinion piece titled Cosmology in Crisis or online the story of our universe may be starting to unravel by Dr. Adam Frank and Dr. Marcello Gisell. Now, it's not exactly news that cosmology is in crisis. Researchers have been talking about this for 30 years, and it's been a pretty big item in the mass media since 2019. But the authors, Frank and Giesel, go further. They actually say, that we may need, quote, a radical departure from the standard model of cosmology, one that requires us to change how we think of the elemental components of the universe, possibly even the nature of space and time. In fact, these authors say, we may need a new story of the universe. Well, what the authors don't say is that there already is a new, alternative story of the universe. That's the story without a Big Bang, without expansion. It's the theory that was first developed by Nobel laureate Hannes Alfe and has been elaborated in detail by myself and other researchers. And we often refer to that as plasma cosmology. It's the idea that we can explain the evolution of the universe using the known laws of electromagnetism, of the development of plasmas, of gravity, and of nuclear forces to explain the evolution of the universe. Without a Big Bang, without inflation, without dark energy, without dark matter, and without a beginning in time. And it's not as if Dr. Frank doesn't know about this alternative. Back in December, he wrote an op-ed for The Spectator. In that, he said that I was the proponent of an alternative story of cosmology. He also referred to my article in the Institute of Arts and Ideas the Big Bang didn't happen, which caused quite a bit of debate back then, both within the community and even within sections of the public. So why doesn't Dr. Adam Giselle just ask, maybe the Big Bang hypothesis is wrong? Maybe the universe isn't expanded. Why don't they ask that? Well, part of the problem is that not only would cosmologists have to agree that a theory that they said is unquestionably true is maybe wrong, they'd also have to abandon the method that got them to that theory. And that is something that Dr. Frank and Dr. Gazelle seem unwilling to do as yet. Instead, they write, that cosmology is not like other sciences. Well, that's where they're wrong. There only is one scientific method, and it covers all of science, including the science of the universe. That's the method where we begin with observations, make generalizations about those observations, and then test those generalizations by making predictions about observations that have not yet occurred. Important step. By that test, the test of comparing predictions with observations made later, the Big Bang has been invalidated for decades. The Big Bang's predictions have been consistently wrong, wrong about the microwave background its temperature, its smoothness. Wrong about the largest scale structures in the universe. 
wrong about the abundances of lithium and helium. And, as J.W. West T. has abundantly illustrated, way wrong about the ages, sizes, and brightness of the most distant galaxies. The cosmologists have not rejected the theory because its predictions have been again and again wrong. Instead, as the co-authors of this opinion piece correctly state, the theory has been repeatedly modified to fit, as well as the emperor's new clothes, the observations that have already been made. Now, this rear view mirror method is not the scientific method. Looking in the rear view mirror is no better a way of learning about the universe than it is of driving a car. Instead, this is the method of Ptolemy, the Ptolemaic method that was used to support the geocentric or Earth-centered cosmology of the Middle Ages, and which was totally discredited by the scientific revolution. A whole usefulness of science to humanity is its ability to correctly predict the future, to correctly predict things that have not yet happened. The difference between the scientific method and the Ptolemaic method is the difference between an airline whose planes are correctly predicted to get safely over the ocean and an airline whose planes crash all the time and then they explain why they crashed. 30 years ago, I wrote in the magazine Sky and Telescope an article titled The Cosmologist's New Clothes. And unfortunately, the emperor's new clothes effect is operating still very strongly within cosmology. In a field where the sources of funding are extremely concentrated, if you doubt the Big Bang, if you say it's wrong, if you even question the theory, then, quote, you're either stupid or unfit for your job, and you won't get any funding. Now, in recent years, as the gap between prediction and observation has grown wider and wider, it has become acceptable to publish, even in the biggest journals, articles that point out specific contradictions between Big Bang predictions and observations. And I and my colleagues have published such articles, with, along with other researchers. This is kind of like saying, it's okay to say, oh, I can see the emperor's elbow, or I can see the emperor's knee, or even I can see the emperor's bottom, but not to say, that's because the emperor is not wearing any clothes. The co-authors of this opinion piece have sort of taken it a step further by saying that the whole story might have to be changed without saying exactly what that story is. They're sort of like saying, well, I can see right through the emperor's clothes. The time has really come to stop the self-censorship and the censorship of others and have an open debate about the validity of the Big Bang, which already is starting. Science only progresses through open, free debate. Self-censorship and the censorship of alternatives, or the ignoring of alternatives, can never succeed in obtaining scientific valid truth. So, right now, it seems that Dr. Frank and Dr. Gazelle are sort of putting on their life jackets on the sinking ship Big Bang, but are not quite ready to jump into the lifeboats. And I can say, don't hesitate. There's a rescue ship, no Big Bang, standing at the ready, very nearby. It's time to get on board and chart a new course for understanding the cosmos. Now, 
This development in September was not the only recent development in the debate over the Big Bang. Back in July, Dr. Rajendra Gupta published an article in which he tried to combine the non-expanding and expanding universe models into a model that had a Big Bang, but it was twice as long ago. 26 billion years, not 13 billion years. Well, I think that's a little like what Tycho Gray tried to do centuries ago in trying to combine or compromise between the geocentric and the heliocentric, sun-centric solar system. But I'm not going to go into that in detail now because Dr. Gupta has agreed to come and appear with me on this video series so that we can have that free and open discussion of did the Big Bang happen 13 billion years ago, 26 billion years ago, or it didn't happen at all. So that debate is going to be happening very soon, and we'll keep you informed of that in the description in this video. So stay tuned, and the debate will continue. The knowledge of plasma that we gain from studying the universe helps us to achieve fusion energy in this decade. If you want a fast transition to a clean environment and a higher standard of living, fund LPP Fusion's research. The link's in the description. Share, subscribe, and get new knowledge for the cosmos at the same time.